double check. Let's pull that up here and see. Yes, sir, just an inch and a sixteenth exactly. Now we're real ready to make that cut. Line it up very carefully. Turn the machine on and make our cut. There's hole number one. There's hole number two. What could be easier than that? We've got our face frame completely assembled. What we did after the dowel joints were all put together is hold it in clamps for a little bit, let them set up, and then we moved it right over here to the bookcase. Well, the first thing we did was laid it up against here, drilled some pilot holes in the solid oak, and then uh, attached it with our finishing nails. We put a little glue behind here, too, and that's why the clamps are on here, just to make sure that glue sets up. Now, the next thing we want to do is face our plywood edges with these solid oak facing strips. And you can make these yourself, or you can buy them ready-made. Another way to do these raw edges, which look pretty ugly this way, is to buy some veneer tape in your hardware store. This particular kind comes with an oak veneer on it, and it's uh, self-stick. You just peel that off, and it sticks right on. And then up on top, we have wrapping here is the crown molding. And it's a two-part molding. You can make it yourself or buy it ready-made. And we'll, we'll show you how to make a perfect 45 right here, so you've got a nice 90 degrees wrapping that. Right, Better get so some measuring done here, and we'll knock these right out. Now we really start to customize our bookcase. We're going to make something that looks a little difficult, but it's really easy. And let me show you how easy it is. This is our crown molding. It goes across the top of the bookcase, but it really is one piece of wood that's shaped on both sides. After we run it through the shaper on both edges, we're going to run it across the table saw and rip it right here, and then reassemble it like that so it looks like something far more complex than it really is. Here's the piece of wood we're using. Here's one of the shaper cutters. Let me show you how that works. It gets mounted right in here very, very simply. The quill is adjusted to exactly the depth of cut we want. And you see the cutter just goes right on that shaft in there spins around and makes our cut very, very simply. So we lock our quill down to exactly where we want it. We lower this fingerboard right on our piece of lumber. We want that lumber to not move at all as we pass it through this cutter. And remember, just as I showed you, I'm going to do both edges here. Turn the machine on. We're going to use our pad block here. to do is run this on the table saw, put the two pieces back together, and we're in business. I'm doing my straight cuts for the edge molding, for the shells and for the verticals. And then here on the ends, we're doing this chamfer, and it'll butt up against it like that. It makes for a really nice detail. Okay, now as for cutting our miters for the crown molding, it's really easy to do. Simply take your saw, I'm moving it from the zero, setting it, and sliding into 45, and then tightening it down. And I'm taking the so one of the side pieces here. I'm just going to cut it. OK, now I know I've got a 45 degree angle that's exact. So I'll just, just measure it to length and do a straight cut to the back. Now, as for the front piece, we've got two angles to work with. So how do you know how to get the right length? It's really easy. What you simply do is for every miter, every 45 degree miter, add 3 quarters of an inch to your length. So our bookcase is 44 inches wide. We've got two miters. The width of the board is 3 quarter inches. So we've got 3 quarter inches plus 3 quarter inches is an inch and a half. The total length is 45 and a half inches. So I'm ready to go. We'll, I'll start installing this. 
Well, that's about it for our crown molding. Now, one little trick here, you want to be very careful putting this corner together so it looks really nice and tight. Now, the next thing we got to worry about is our door down here. There's a couple of ways we can go on that. One is you can go to the hardware store and buy a door. But we showed you a very interesting little technique earlier when we were putting together our face frame, and the same thing can apply to your door. You can make this very simply. See the corner? Just like the face frame. Slips right together. The only difference here, the rail and style has been rounded off slightly. Now, what makes that a door? Let me show you. We have a little plywood panel. This is simply quarter-inch plywood panel. Fits right in there like that. Look at that. We've made this little rabbit cut in the back of our panel, uh, rather our frame, to fit that. And from the front side, it looks just like that. It's a beautiful little door. Next thing we do, we've chosen a simple little hinge for it. The hinge will screw right to the back of the frame. Look how simple this works. The rest of the hinge screws right to your face frame, and voila, we have a door. Now, the next thing we're going to do is finish our bookcase. Well, we're getting down to the final touches before we put on our finish. What I'm doing is I'm setting the nails that we use to attach our strips and face frame. And we have to do a little final sanding also. When the whole piece is uh, apart, before you've assembled it, that's the time to do your major sanding. Start with about 100 or 120 grit on the plywood, because that comes from the store pretty well finished. Your other lumber, however, well, you'll have to start with maybe a 60 or 80 grit. But right now, what we need to do is get the finger marks and what have you that's accumulated on the pieces we've assembled it. The thing you want to be extra careful about, though, is make sure that you're careful when you're sanding on the oak veneer, especially right up against the hard oak part. You don't want to sand so much that you sand through to the next layer. This little device here makes sanding pretty easy. It's an orbital sander, and uh, it doesn't need to be run exactly with the grain. It just sort of runs around in, in a little circle and does a beautiful job in sanding everything. Very, very simple to use. Yeah, it's great. When you're going over it, though, also pay extra attention. Look for any excess glue spots, because when you come back to put your finish on, those glue spots will really pop out. Nothing more heartbreaking than I've oh, done that. You know, it makes a big mess, that's too. Really tough. After all the sanding and after all this procedure's been done, you're getting closer to putting the finish on, but you're not quite ready yet. You have to really clean up the entire project. Probably, this is, would work, but it's probably better to use a vacuum cleaner and really get the dirt out of the little cracks. You're going to have little crevices here. And then all that sawdust has to be taken out because the finish itself will bring it back to the surface and muddy up your finish. After you've used your vacuum cleaner, go over the entire project with a tack rag. That's just a little piece of gauze that's been impregnated with some sort of wax, and that'll pick up every last speck of the uh, dust and what have you that's accumulated there. I'll let you do the cleaning. Well, I do a pretty good job. <laughs> you do a great job. Well, how did you like my cleaning job? You did a marvelous job, Les. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> We're using an oil finish right here. And the wonderful thing about the oil is that what we can do after we put our first coat on is take a very fine grit of sandpaper, like a 220, and when it's still wet, do a light sanding on it, and the, the particles of the dust and the oil will mix together into a slurry and be absorbed into the pores of the wood and make a very nice finish. That really is a great technique, and the more you do that, three or four or five or six coats sanded in between like that will really build up a great surface, and it's very, very durable. Not like a polyurethane finish, and we really don't need that kind of a finish on here because we're not going to set wet glasses and that sort of thing on the bookcase, but this will really... Really be a beautiful finish. More of a hand-rubbed, uh, nice oil finish. Yeah. Like um, also, after the first coat, what we're going to do is come back and fill these holes where we set our nails, and we'll do a nice, light sanding. You know, another thing, too, when you're doing finishing, be sure to work in a well-ventilated area that's as dust-free as you can possibly get. And whatever finish you're using, always read the manufacturer's instructions. And before you know it, you'll be finished and you'll be able to take this beautiful project of yours up into the living room or wherever you're going to put it and start enjoying it. Well, you can see it's really not difficult to build your own bookcases. Not only that, every time you look at your bookcase, you'll have the satisfaction of knowing that you built it. 
We hope that we've been able to help you with your woodworking skills so that you can do it yourself. I'm Les Sizzik. And I'm Avian Rogers. Thanks a lot for joining us.